Um, we move to, um, to max flow problem. So in the second part, it's DP and max flow that are by far the most useful. Of course, string matching is also uh, very useful. Um, so uh, let us see kind of a selection of all of these types. So here is one problem that you had. So you have a computer network in which computers are connected by unidirectional uh, fiber optic cables in God knows what way. Uh, and it happens that you realize that one bunch of computers are attacking a few, uh, a few other uh, computers. And in an emergency, you want to disconnect some of these links such that uh, the attacking computers cannot reach their targets, but disconnecting each link has certain price. Uh, if link is ij, you have certain price c of ij. Yeah? And you want to disconnect the attackers from the victims by uh, in the cheapest possible way, disconnecting the links uh, whose uh, total uh, cost is uh, as small as possible. How would you solve this problem? That's just a mean cut problem, isn't it? That's just a mean cut problem. Now, what will be the source and what will be the sink in a mean cut like this? Yep, so sources are attackers, uh, sinks are the victims, but since we can have many of them, what is the usual trick? Super source and super sink with the links of infinite capacity. Uh, now, what are the capacities of each fiber optic link? You want to minimize the total cost, and you have the cost of uh, disconnecting each edge. So what do you set for capacity of the link? Is it the capacity of the throughput of information or something else? The cost of disconnecting. So notice in max flow, the costs can be uh, uh, the, the capacities of the links can be something else, so to speak, that can be interpreted as capacity. In this case, it would be the cost of disconnecting each the, of that link. Now, let's make our life a little bit more complicated. So assume now exactly the same setup but besides of uh, <coughs> disconnecting the links, uh, you can remove the computers. You can shut down the computers that, are, that correspond to each node. And this process has a cost itself. So now we have a, uh, um, a network in which the edges have costs, but also the vertices have costs. And you want to disconnect. Of course, once you remove a vertex, all the incident edges disappear. So how would you minimize the cost if now you can remove the edges, if you can also remove the vertices? Let me give you a little hint. Try to reduce this problem again to a max flow problem by 
altering the flow network. How would you alter a flow network to make this problem a special case of regular max flow? How would you account for removing a node? Can you replace removing a node with replacing a single link? How to get into such situation? What can you do? What do you think? Uh, well, ah, that's brilliant. So the trick is, it's a very useful trick. You will do the following surgery. Each node, right, that might look like that, right? It has some incoming links and some outgoing links. We are going to replace it uh, with two nodes, one will have only incoming edges just the same as this node here. Then we connect this node with one single edge with that node. And now this edge has, except for this edge, has only outgoing edges uh, that exactly correspond to outgoing edges of this. So in essence, you take the node, you split it in two. One half retains all the incoming edges. The other half retains all outgoing edges. And you put one edge in between. And what will be the capacity of this edge? The cost of the node. So if you have here the costs of links i, j, and you have the cost of j, this will become cost of j, and the uh, edges remain uh, unchanged. So that's a very useful thing that uh, allows you to solve the problems in which the vertices, in terms of uh, max flow, you can imagine uh, how this can become a solution to regular max flow problem. If all the, so all in the, such a problem, all the uh, edges will have capacity, but also all vertices will have a capacity how much flow can go through that vertex, meaning reaching the vertex and then uh, leaving the vertex. So, and you would do exactly the same. You would split the two vertices, the vertex into two, and put the capacity of the vertex into this edge. And now, voila, you have just a regular uh, max flow problem. So, sometimes you have to do a little bit of uh, surgery uh, to the original. Uh, to the original problem. Okay, so uh, let us look at another problem that also requires a surgery. So assume that you have a flow network, okay, that consists a lot of way, uh, oil wells, Right, and a whole bunch of oil refineries. And the pipes are connected, they are unidirectional, uh, and uh, they are connected in some uh, complicated uh, network, right, uh, that is then connected to refineries. And what you want to do, all the pipes are unidirectional. And uh, what you want to do is uh, you want to place minimal number of flow meters uh, so that uh, some total of the readings, uh, well, that, so that uh, 
not sum total, but that the information from all the readings of, of the network can be used to calculate uh, the total throughput, how much oil the wells are sending to all the refineries. Uh, the, a trivial solution would be, for example, on each uh, refinery, you put a meter on all incoming edges, or on every well, you put a meter, right? But that's wasteful because, say, in this situation, you can put just one meter here, and uh, uh, you don't have to put two meters because some total of throughput in that two will be reflected here. How would you solve this problem? Set all pipes, all edges to cost one, to capacity one, and find the mean cut. But unfortunately, there is a problem with that. What's the problem if you do that? What is a mean cut? If you find the mean cut, right, if you do max flow, you find the mean cut, the mean cut will be, uh, because each edge is a unit cost, it will be the smallest uh, number of edges that cross this cut. But what, can it, what it is not taken into account in this mean cut? You can, well, if there are many edges that cut through the mean cut, that's the smallest number. Is this edge taken into account in a mean cut? Yeah. This one. So this is sink, this is source. Uh, what does mean cut take into account? Only some total of forward <coughs> <coughs> edges. Uh, so you might get an overestimation unless the network is in the full flow, right? Uh, because then opposite pipes will be empty, but you have to measure any amount being pumped. So it mi you might have a flow in opposite direction, right? So you have to put a meter there as well. But this is not taken into account with your mean cut. So what do you do first with your network? To make sure that you take into account any pipe that crosses the mean cut in any of the directions. How would you make sure that if there is an edge in this direction, it's counted? You replace each edge, you add to each edge an edge in the opposite direction, right? And then in this augmented network, you find a mean cut, and now in that network, only edges in forward direction will be counted, but for every edge in opposite direction, we know there exists an edge in forward direction, so it will be counted. Right, so this is example that uh, you have to do a little bit of surgery, either by renaming what capacities are. For example, here we replace the capacity of all pipes with unit capacity if your uh, task is just to count, right? Okay, so let's see other max flow problems. Uh, a typical, um, typical problem would be something like this. You have a library that has a certain number of members, and you have a books. You have books, and each book says, has a certain number of copies, right? And you get a list of requests from every member which books this person would like to borrow. And you would like to borrow, and every person can take at most, uh, say, uh, 10 books at each time. 
how would you uh, find, uh, how would you assign the books so that the largest number of books is uh, given away, is checked out. That's, so if this is a typical example, you put a super source and connect with each user with link of what capacity. Then, because this will limit how many books they can check out. What's the capacity? When do you have an edge between a user and a book? If he wants that book. What's the capacity of each pipe there? One, because you want to give him one copy at most. Many copies of the same. We assume that all the users are sane. OK? Why would you want two copies of the same book? And the policy of the library, sorry, you cannot. Maybe you all are so paranoid that you want to compare the two books to see, two copies to see whether they are really exactly the same. Or one book says one thing and the other book, well, depends, you know, if it's government programs then you can easily imagine that you want to get all the copies and compare them, right? Okay, so uh, how about the super sync? Uh, what is the capacity of the pipe from all the books, every book to, or every title, I should say, to the super sync? Uh, it should be infinity because there should be infinity copies. No, every library has at least, at most, uh, two or three copies of each book, and not very often uh, two or three, but for books on high demand, maybe you have three or four copies, but not more than that. So what's then the capacity? The, uh, the capacity of the library. The number of copies of that book. And then you simply do a max flow. Okay, uh, let me uh, give you another example that can be solved in two ways and both of them are very informative. So assume that you have a, a warehouse. So you have a warehouse and you are given the plan. Right? <coughs> So here is how the warehouse looks like. And you have shelves, so you can imagine that as if it's, you can simplify the picture by simply dividing the whole warehouse into cells. But because it's a very big warehouse, some of the cells are occupied by the pillars of the, in the library. So it looks like this, say, and say this pillar in the middle and these four pillars. You have four pillars here to, right? And the rest you can think of as bookshelves or, you know, shelves. And each shelf has a capacity. But the building is pretty old. So for each row, you have total capacity of, of, of that row, R. And for each column, uh, so capacity of row, and this is capacity of a column, right? And of course here, when you have a pillar, there is, this is capacity zero, there is not, you cannot put anything. And each shelf has its own capacity Cij. Your problem is to store as much stuff as possible but never exceeding the capacity of each cell, each shelf, and never exceeding the capacity of each row and each column. Yeah? Do the capacity of each cell sum up to the capacity of the row? No. 
They can be larger, smaller, name it. If it's some total is smaller, then obviously capacity of the row is superfluous. But there are no... So how would you solve this problem? What does it beg you to do with this problem? You have to maximize some total of contents of each cell subject to the constraints that each row and each column can add up only up to a certain number. This is an ideal situation for a linear programming. So each variable xij will tell you how much stuff you put in cell cij is uh, uh, how much you put in in a shelf um, what is it uh, shelves s i j right that's your this here is a, a shelf i j if this is i and this is j so what is the first constraint how is x i j related to the capacity of i j yeah? This is the capacity of the shelf, so the weight that you put into this cell should be smaller or equal, right? Very good. What are the linear constraints? You simply sum all the cells where the cells exist, right? And set it equal smaller than uh, the capacity of each row. You sum up all the variables row-wise and set them smaller or equal right than the capacity of the column and of course we have extra assumption xij bigger or equal than zero why is this so why is this legitimate have you ever seen a weight of minus three kilos you have to invent anti-gravity to do this kind of stuff and uh, thanks heaven, we still don't know how to do that. Okay, so what is the only problem with this solution? Assume that what you want to store is a, is a are objects right that have to be integers, so certain number of units, say they all weigh one kilogram, or uh, so uh, you cannot allow fractional solutions. If you put uh, assumption that the solutions have to be integers, then you get an NP hard problem. But some uh, linear programming problems can be reduced to other problems for which we do get integer solutions. What do you think? What is the other trans, uh, translation of this problem to a type of problem that we have covered? If each cell is uniquely determined by what row it belongs to and what column it belongs to. So you can think of objects here being uh, rows and columns. So what do you think would be then, what can we construct? What kind of graph? What will be the vertices of the graph? Uh, to help you, 
how can you reduce this problem to a max flow problem? Okay, so we need the rows, and what else do we need? Columns. So we can make a bipartite graph in which the rows, say, uh, will be one set of vertices and columns will be another set of vertices. And we have n many here and n many here if this is n by n. In what case is there a pipe between a row and a column? If the cell exists. If the cell exists, exactly. So this will be the capacity of cell Ij. Right? And then you will have super sync and, sorry, super source and the super sync. What's the capacity of each of these edges? Uh, the row capacity. The row capacity. So here is the capacity of the row and here is the capacity of the column. How do I now, and now of course what I want to do is max, I want to maximize the flow through this cut, right? Because it's the most convenient. And to do that, I use my max flow algorithm. For what reason, uh, can I, how can I ensure that the solution produced will be always an integer? Why is the solution by max flow if I use Ford Falkerson or speeded up version uh, Edmonds Carp, right? Why do these algorithms based on augmenting paths always produce an integer solution? So each capacity is an integer, we are assuming that all the, exactly, you know, if it's, we can assume the capacity of each shelf is an integer, right? So, um, because if all objects are integer size, you cannot use the leftover. So, uh, all the, if all the capacities are integers, when you do augmenting paths, Every path has increases the flow for an amount that is equal to the capacity of the bottleneck. But the bottleneck, just like all other capacities of all other edges, is always an integer. So in the process, you always keep adding an integer amount of flow. So if you find max flow here, you are guaranteed that uh, the um, uh, that the result will be also uh, integer in all the flows, uh, and of course, then the max flow will be the will be integer. Okay, very good. I hope you get a. Uh, uh, an idea how, what you are expected to be able to do on the final. So when preparing for the final, please uh, make sure that you understand all the solutions that were shown in class, what um, uh, Harris did, uh, when Harris did DP and uh, uh, the problems that I have shown you because on the final <coughs> you will need
for some of the some of the problems will be really just exactly the method that you have seen. Maybe one problem will require a slight tweaking of the method, but very kind of inessential generalization. So if you understand for each problem what was, so to speak, the trick, what kind of reasoning was used to solve it and why exactly that reasoning, then you will be absolutely fine for the final. There will be no uh, uh, ex sort of um, uh, surprises, right? So the, you have all the tools and machinery, and uh, there will be no surprises. You will just you might have to slightly modify, slightly generalize. If something we did in one dimension, you will do it in two maybe, or if we did it in two, you might did it in three dimension, but the bottom line, the logic behind will be the same. And uh, how to translate things to max flow, how to find mean cuts, um, how, if there is a linear programming, just how to formulate inequalities, that's uh, piece of cake. So tomorrow we will do <coughs> a final bunch of a few problems. Uh, but as of now, if you really, really carefully read everything and you understood everything, uh, you know, the, the final will be just a, a formality for you, okay? On the final, because there will be 720 finals to mark, so I'll have probably at least uh, 10 tutors helping me. You have to write clearly, do not write long stories. So for DP, just say, these are my sub-problems, and you write just like what we did here, uh, P I J equals, and then you can put in quotation an English statement, maximal number of blah and blah obtained from blah and blah. Then you uh, say in what order you solve them, right? And you say what the, you just write explicitly the recursion. You write a recursion equation. And this is all what it takes. You don't have to uh, go into, don't mention pointers or unless you really have to for some reason. You just simply state the recursion, right? And there is nothing much to it than um, worry about the edge, uh, edge uh, boundaries to make sure your recursion is correct. <clears throat> For max flow, you can just quote uh, Edmund Scarp, which is Ford Folkerson done by right, uh, shortest path because it's guaranteed to run in polynomial time. You don't have to explain what Ford Folkerson or Edmund Scarp is, right? So you just explain how the flow network is generated. For every whatever uh, computer I have a uh, vertex, for every fiber optic link I have an edge, and then you say what the capacity of an edge is, and then you say we find max flow using, say, Edmond Scarp, and then how do you get the mean cut is if this is what you need, you simply say in the last residual flow network, find all vertices accessible from the source. That's left side of the cut, all inaccessible vertices <coughs> go into the right side of the cut, and that's it. No, more, no other philosophy is uh, needed. If the solution needs to be integer, you simply say that 
augmenting paths always adds flow in integers, so the result will be integers. Um, so it will be really, really straightforward, right? But write clearly because there is very limited time to mark all the finals and you don't want to lose marks because uh, you uh, just made something totally illegible and we just couldn't read what you are saying. So, uh, and uh, don't be excessively verbose. Explain everything in detail, but just what's necessary, like uh, as I mentioned for MinCat and for MaxFlow and uh, you are all fine. Okay, so tomorrow we will do kind of just a few polishings, nothing new, but uh, just a few more examples and then you are all set to study the problems at home. Read each problem and each solution, put it several times through your head to make sure you understand where each bit intervened, right? Because if you ever have to solve problems, this will be your tools once you are at the workforce. Okay, see you tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, thank Quick. you. Thank you. I will. I will. Um, so I just want to confirm we